one. Uh, <laughs> well, well, first let's touch on it real quick. Just so because I mean, this is your first time. I don't think we've, we've we've never had you on this show, right? You've been no. on the fight. You, no. You've been with us on Fight Underground, but um, but not this. Yeah. Um, but so so just for a quick primer, uh, can you can you tell us about your wrestling history? Uh, uh, the elevator pitch and 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 that 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 link before we mentioned before to Pittsburgh. Okay. Um. Yeah. My link to Pittsburgh actually uh, comes through comic books. I uh, I was at Loose Ends like 1996, <laughs> and uh, my best friend is a cat in Pittsburgh named Lee Motor, comic book artist. And we were working on some stuff at the time. And he said, look, why don't you come down here for a while? And uh, yeah, right around Labor Day in 96, I think, moved to uh, moved to Pittsburgh, uh, stayed for eight months. And after a couple of weeks, I said, you know, fuck, I, I, I got I to gotta wrestle. And uh, Lee and I went to a WWF house show. Uh, at the uh, at the igloo, and uh, during intermission, I said, I, you know, I don't know any of the wrestling in this town, but I know I know how to find it. And standing on the floor during intermission with all the house lights up, I looked around, and I found the one kid who had a handful of dirt sheets. <laughs> and introduced myself to who turned out to be Nino Maddie. If you're uh, Pittsburgh wrestling vernacular, go, you, you know your knowledge of Pittsburgh wrestling goes back that far. And he introduced me to uh, he introduced me to Jim Miller, the promoter from PWX. Mm -hmm. Talked to him. A couple of days later, went worked I, out in the ring, and this and is this was this was the late nineties. This was the heyday of PWX yeah, when they were was, on. This was nineteen ninety six. They were on TV between uh, locally, I think ECW and Shotgun Saturday Night. So, yeah. so, so it was like it was the independent promotion in the late nineties. Yeah, um, and um, uh, worked there for eight months. Came back to Toronto, and a couple of years later, decided, you know what, I'm going to do it again. And in uh, spring of 99, moved back to Pittsburgh for a year and a half. And um, after, uh, after I came back the second time, I kept coming down uh, a couple of times a month doing commentary for IWC, uh, for Norm Connors at the time. And did that for about three years. That was, I think I, uh, I think I stopped making regular trips down in December of 2005. That's how long ago it was. But worked for a bunch of the indies around, uh, around town. Um, I, I think maybe I did one or two matches for Steel City before Norm took over IWC. And then years there doing commentary. Uh, the commentary team was me, Jeff Gorman, and Joe Dombrowski, who, congratulations, I'm getting MLW, Joe. Yes. Um, and then, you know, Pittsburgh has been like a second home to me, so uh, not as often as I would like, but when I get the opportunity to come down, I still do. Um and uh, we, uh, we got we got from the chat room. Uh, Tina spent some good time around the uh, Cincinnati area, and and she she thinks she briefly remember she she briefly remembers you making some stops in Ohio. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I when I was first in Pittsburgh in ninety six ninety seven, I was traveling to Ohio. I was traveling to to Cleveland mostly for uh, Cleveland All Pro and uh, mm -hmm. and for uh, CWA. Jesus, uh, <laughs> what was C what was CWA? That was Cincinnati. Gmo and that's no, that's Cleveland. That's oh, okay. Uh, Gmo and Psycho Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yikes! <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> it wasn't but just a. You tell me, it's, 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 up it, with, it's not just uh, a clever nickname you're saying. No, fucking idiots. <laughs> uh, I got hooked up with um, with Les Thatcher in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. In, and and uh, and started making uh, trips even when I was living 
uh, back here in Toronto. I was making trips for Les Thatcher and the uh, Heartland Wrestling Association. Mm -hmm. And I did that from probably uh, 97, 98, 99. I think my last HWA show was actually in Pittsburgh, like a sold show in 2000. Um, But um, yeah, so, you know, uh, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, a little bit of New Jersey, a little bit of New York, uh once or twice in west virginia um uh a show or two in kentucky uh a really ridiculous trip to kansas you know (laughs) there's there's a there's a uh when i was traveling a lot um living in the states and traveling a lot it was it was great times and great people and then came back here to uh came back here to Toronto and then started doing more commentary. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was ring announcing for XPW when they came to the East coast. Nice. Uh, I started, uh, I started, I ran some shows in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, which is silly for a couple of reasons. (laughs) Did some stuff, you know, wrestled some, some more in Buffalo and then, Started concentrating probably about 2007. Started concentrating on things here at home, mm-hmm. running some shows and wrestling for um, uh, Ethan Page's Alpha One, uh, for Smash Wrestling, um, a few different groups up here. Super Kicked spent a year, uh, the first year of, of Super Kicked. And uh, yeah, but I mean, Pittsburgh for me, when I get a chance to come down, I do because. I still love the town, and I still have a, a I still have a lot of friends down there. Uh, uh, yeah, I've I've very fond memories of of, of Pittsburgh. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, good to see that it's Karen Karen threw up there. Uh, that, that's a lot of that's 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 a good rolodex of companies you've been with, even up there too. That 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 have heard a good bit about. So. Yeah. Hmm. I've been I've been fortunate to uh, to make my way around. Uh, I think Les Thatcher described me years ago as uh, uh, as um, a good promo and a leg drop, uh, and he can bump. Uh, <laughs> so I've been able to take these meager talents mm-hmm. and uh, you know go around you know the the, the Midwest and Northwest uh, Northeast uh, U.S. and. Um, Went to Dombrowski and I went to England. Uh, and, oh, you're uh, part of the one PW trip, right? I was, it's, dude. I became Booker at one PW. Oh wow! <laughs> so, so I often reference, much to the chagrin of the local talent up here. I uh, I am the old man who tells stories and and is like, uh, well, when we were in one PW, <laughs> uh, you know, which is like. These stories are only 15 years old. Is, is this like how, because I remember for the <laughs> longest time, and I think it was even a subsection on his website, Jonah Brassley would go, when he's like, something ridiculous is happening in front of him, I would say, what has happened to my life? I used to go to England, and this yeah. is where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, for me, England and Spain, and um, there are still a group of us, uh, me, Dombrowski, uh, uh, Steve Carino, um, Rick Peters, uh, who's a, a Dutch producer and promoter, um, occasionally Corey Graves. I just spoke to here. I'm just dropping names. Look at that. Uh, Let me I, pick those I up for you. I spoke to, uh, um, hell's his name in WWE now? Maverick. Oh, uh, Spud. Yeah. Yeah. But what's the, what's the characters for? What's his, what's his gimmick first name? Uh, Jake Maverick. Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick. Why couldn't I remember Drake? Uh, just spoke to him a couple of days ago. Um, that we still, but you know, me, Dombrowski, Carino, and Peters still uh, once at least once a year we have this chain of text messages where uh, where we just say, "Man, if the fucking promoter had just listened to us." We'd still be running today because <laughs> one PW very was v- something very very special. Yes, very very quickly, mm-hmm. and um, but it was it was kind of it was a shooting star. It, yeah, it it 
it burnt bright and hot and and then just fizzled in the atmosphere. It was wild because I've seen a lot of those because I, I, a lot of those interviews are being pulled for the projects I've been doing for Dobrowski, uh, yeah. like like the Samoa Joe missing matches and and things like that. And, you know, I, I think there was a little bit on. Uh, well, I don't know. I've done so many best ofs and crap for him. Uh, you know, it, it was like you know this was what the the late two thousands. It was was that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, and, started it started. Um, it was uh, October first. 2005 was the first show we mm -hmm. did October. Then we were back uh, all through 2006, 2007. And then it started, the, the, the promotion started changing hands Yeah, and it, started it, uh, and hit the, it started hitting the rocks in 2007. It, it had like, like everybody that we were watching in impact, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Daniels, Joe, AJ were there, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Graves, Ash, Sterling was there, you know, when you know, he was still, you know, you know, pretty much on the come up for on the indies, and, and just like every name you could think of, uh, you know, at you the want time, the, you, 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 want na the, you, you named half the, of them already, I think. But uh. <laughs> you want, do you want my do you want my classic how Corey Graves got to England story? Sure, <laughs> I've told this, uh, I've told this about a million times. Um, uh, when we were getting ready for the first show, uh, we had Abyss booked. And they were trying to book Sinister Minister Jim Mitchell to come and uh, and manage him because that's what was going on in the impact at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mitchell had a day job, and uh, you know it would have meant it would have meant taking time off work to fly over there and blah blah blah. And I guess the price that he asked was was too high for the promoter, and the promoter said to me, "I I don't know what we're going to do," and I said. I've got a guy. I've got a guy who can talk. He can work his ass off. He is incredibly charismatic. I promise you, if you bring this kid over and, and make him a business mouthpiece, he's going to get over so huge that within two years, he will be your one PW champion. And I was absolutely wrong because it only took one year. And I brought. I convinced him to bring over Corey Graves, and a year later, he was one PW champ. So That's great. Uh, yeah, I. I. When I moved to Pittsburgh the second time in uh, late spring of '99, um, he was he was 15 years old, and he was training, and um, we a caravan of us, a bunch of cars drove to West Virginia for his first match because he only had to be 16 to wrestle in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And, it, and I've, I've never looked at anybody in their first match and said, you know, this kid's going to do something. This kid's going to, he's going to be something. And I, I've never been prouder of being right about something. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he was fantastic. And unfortunately, his in ring came to an end early, and uh, but you know I remember you know him telling me he he said to them I'm not done yet and mm -hmm. he's not and there's he's, a look if you're on video with us that's a look of what uh, oh look that, at that that's Sterling James Keenan sometime in the 2000s before he cut the hair it's about when <laughs> I was introduced to him. And uh, he is the guy, uh, my classic, my classic uh, uh, compliment of Sterling James Keenan, and that would be probably about this era that I'm about to pick up. I don't remember any other time where somebody came through the curtain and I just felt dirty for seeing him doing an entrance, you know, just like, <laughs> like, like, he just like that. The, yeah. There, the, the hustler, uh, uh, you know, I was like, this guy just seems so greasy and I, you know, and and just this persona and everything and it's just like the entire room got filthy you know <laughs> so i when i was uh running uh wrestlers union shows my promotion is called union of independent professional wrestlers right right they say the union or wrestlers union when i started running here in toronto in 2007 i was bringing him up and i put him together with a couple of people in a stable and uh and i called the stable um BDSM blood death sex magic because I thought I thought this is just 
filthy enough to work. That that <laughs> is um jeez, what was the what was the one? I think it was Shima now walking wild. Uh yeah. and I think it was it was it was him and Jimmy DeMarco, maybe Chess Flexor was a part of it in Cleveland early AIW, and I think they call themselves Psychosexual Panic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> So, uh, um, but uh, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, and also classically, fir- first guy that wanted to do the show that asked us about coming on the show. So, so he's <laughs> yeah. always, he's always, he always lands that landmark for us. So, um, as you know, just some wrestling fans bugging everybody at the merch tables. Yeah, please do my podcast. What the hell's a podcast in two in two thousand six? <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So what are you working on now? You know, you got you got some stuff to plug here. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, what, 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 what's happening with you these days? Um, I am um, I'm working on a new comic book and uh, I've been uh, writing comics uh, on and off for a few years now. And that was actually the last time I was in Pittsburgh was, uh, you know, at a, a Wizard World Pittsburgh convention. Mm-hmm. Terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that, that hey man, if, if you wanted zero it line, was a, it was a three day show Friday, Saturday, Sunday on yeah. Friday. Yeah. I thought, what the fuck am I doing here on Saturday? I abandoned my artist alley table to move in to my publisher's booth. And on Sunday, I only went to the show to pack up and leave and Lee motor. And I went for sushi and then, <laughs> uh, and then I went to the airport. It was like I abandoned the show on the third Who day. They, they had like, Why did I do this? They had like Shane Douglas and another ECW guy. I can't remember. It wasn't Sandman, but right? Like I remember Joe was no, Joe was like Shane their handler or something. Show. What's that? No. I, I would have had somebody to talk to if Shane were at that show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the it might have been the second one then. Maybe the one you didn't get to get to. I, yeah, you're probably yeah. the first one. But uh, but right now I'm working on a new comic called Chance for Survival. It's uh, about a female sheriff trying to keep law and order in her in a small walled city that exists in the ruins of the world after a monster apocalypse. So uh, you've got, you know, um, uh, tractor trailer sized kaiju that have devastated the earth and the remnants of humanity have started to gather back together to try and rebuild. And uh, there's a, a, a one of these little towns is north of what used to be uh, Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, our main character, her name is Chance Beckett. And she is the sheriff of this little town. And it's, uh, it's her story of uh, trying to keep law and order. Yeah, there you go. Trying to keep law and order between the inhabitants and trying to protect the town from the remnants of the monster hordes that still roam the, uh, the, the vast countryside. So a classic old West story. I get it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, you know, it's a, a little bit of Rio uh, Bravo and a little bit of uh, quick in the dead, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a little bit of hang them high. My, you know, my, it, it, uh, little bits and pieces from all my favorite Westerns over the years, uh, the unforgiven and, 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 and the spaghetti Western trilogy, the, the, you know, the man with no name trilogy, stuff like that. And, um, and then mixed in with, things like uh dallas because i want (laughs) that was such a good show kids uh (laughs) it's on amazon prime in the states uh i love i love the um the drama of you know scrapping for fighting for every inch of land you know trying to backstab each other to to you know to steal another another patch of of possible oil land and um uh you know something like uh starship troopers or uh aliens where there are these monsters who just seemingly mindlessly are out to murder you so all thrown into one pot and uh and hopefully with you know a a kick-ass female lead character and uh you know let's see what we can do with it so uh 
yeah, chance for survival. It's uh, I'm I'm starting a Kickstarter on. It's launching next Tuesday, the 26th. Uh, the goal is ten thousand dollars Canadian, which is uh, <laughs> about uh, I think it's about seventy five hundred US. Okay, twenty or twenty five percent somewhere in there. So it's like somewhere between seventy five and seventy eight hundred US. I've never done an international Kickstarter, so I'm I'm really curious to see how this translates when well, I uh, if, what... if you go on Kickstarter. Kickstarter has a, an incredible feature where if you go on Kickstarter and you're signed in, mm -hmm. it will translate the goal uh, into your local currency. Mm, so whenever good, good, good. I see, whenever I look at a Kickstarter, like a perfect example is. Uh, Michael Kingston, who does the Headlocked comic book, and he's currently funding yep. uh, a new version, a new volume of of that book, and it's all it's all wrestling stories, and it's all stuff that he's co-written with, you know, people like AJ Styles and and uh, and Effie, and um, he just met his goal earlier tonight, and he still nice. got three weeks of funding going. So when I see uh, his campaign. It doesn't come up as fourteen thousand five hundred. It comes up as like uh, seventeen thousand nine hundred Canadian, right? Yeah. So Kickstarter does some of that for you. Good. Um, Good. It's it's like it's like when you subscribe to New Japan here in the states or even there, and you're like yeah. you look at your PayPal account, and you're just like, okay, how much was it this month? Because the exchange rate keeps going, right? Yeah. You know, it's nine ninety nine yen. But you don't know what that it ends up being like seven something half the time I think so yeah yeah, yeah. so that kind of thing so that's good that's good and and yeah. and, and, and and good to hear that he met his goal uh, uh, Kingston's a, a old, old friend of the show uh, we, uh, we have Kingston's several great. of his books floating around the studio here so yeah. so um, it's gonna launch Tuesday evening uh, I am hoping that we can uh, meet the goal early and then get the stretch goals but we're gonna have there's gonna be four different covers for the book. Nice. Um, uh, standard cover by my new artist, Eric uh, Tomeo, and then uh, Andy Belanger, who wrestles in Quebec as Bob the Animal Anger. Is, he's doing a cover. He was working on it tonight. We were exchanging texts. Uh, Bill McKay, who is a pretty coveted cover artist these days, is doing a cover. And uh, we've got a photo cover. I have a model friend who uh, just yesterday morning we were we drove about an hour north of Toronto to this fantastic site uh, and, that my photographer uh, had picked out and we took photos for the cover and he's been I'm I, I'm sitting on a text message over here on another screen uh, that he was sending me edits of the photos so um, <laughs> we're also going to have uh, tiers where you can. Uh, sponsor a page and you'll get a, like an archive print of the page and, and a couple of different covers. Uh, there's a couple of chances to have a cameo in the book, but mostly it's just going to, most of the tiers are going to be about the book, getting different copies of the book mm -hmm. with add-ons. Like there's t-shirts. This is going to be available. Uh, t-shirts, uh, a sheriff's badge, lapel pin copies of uh copies of my previous graphic novel heroes of homeroom c there get the glare off of it um all kinds of stuff i'm hoping that uh wrestling fans in pittsburgh will either uh remember me just enough to check out the kickstarter <laughs> or just be enough of a comic book fan that they know that Kickstarter is the place right now where the most uh, the most innovative, the most different, the most uh, uh, I, I, it's thriving with new talent. Uh, people who are understanding that um, one of the best things to do when you're trying to make good comics is avoid bad publishers and to do it, just do it yourself. And Kickstarter is an amazing forum for getting your creation out to an audience that um, that wants that that unfettered talent to tell you their stories. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So uh, I see it hasn't launched yet. I set my notification on there. When are you kicking yeah. this guy off? Yeah, uh, t Tuesday night. I'm thinking about 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. In the meantime, what you can do is you can go. Uh, Kickstarter has a feature, a pre-launch page. Um, you mentioned clicking the notification button. You go to, I bought a URL specifically for this to make it easier for everybody. Go to kickstartthiscomic.com. Oh, wow. Word, kickstartthiscomic.com. <laughs> And that'll take you to the Kickstarter uh, pre-launch notification page. There's a button there that says, notify me on launch. Click that. And next Tuesday, you'll get an email to tell you that the, um, that the campaign is live. Uh, we have an early bird special where the, um, the Andy Belanger cover for the book, the variant cover, is going to be available at, um, at five bucks off. So it'll be 20 bucks Canadian instead of 25. And you'll get all the digital rewards with that. And uh, for the first two days of the campaign, that'll be available at, at five bucks off. So I'm hoping that people will come in that first 48 hours and throw your money on the pile and help your <laughs> Uncle Kingdom make his comic book happen. There you go. There you go. Check it out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's some awesome stuff. And you got a lot of projects on here. I'm looking at your link tree. Uh, I'm looking at your Twitter oh, profile yeah. and everything. Yeah. You you got a, a podcast. Too much on the go sometimes. A lot. <laughs> so uh, uh, go check all that. Your, your your my name is Kingdom on, on Twitter, and you can follow the links from there to all kinds of things that you're doing. Right. Yeah. All all my social media is at my name is Kingdom. All one word. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. The all-important Patreon. Speaking of throw some money on the pile. <laughs> hey, what's up? Well, you heard our list at the beginning, so uh, you know I, I encourage them to. Because once you start supporting one Patreon, it's easy to throw a buck at another show. I know I'm guilty yeah. of that, and I've had to be like, oh no, how many podcasts that I'm in projects and comics am I contributing yeah. to right now? You know, so it's it, they make it really easy to do. Well, it was Kickstarter too, uh, so you know that that uh, I'll throw something on there, and and and, and a year later, I'm like, why do I have this comic book about Hacksaw Jim Duggan uh, in the I, mail right yeah. now? <laughs> One of my favorite things is forgetting that I pledged to a Kickstarter yes, yes. because I will, you know, I'll go to the mailbox someday, you know, three, four months from now and have a card that I have to pick something up at the post office or have a book there. And I was like, what the, what the, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then have, have some new comic book to read or, so, or, or yeah. international. Cause this happened to me a couple of times. One, it took a little bit to get the main event candle for, because it was from, from the UK. And also uh, somebody did these great stickers, these great kind of anime looking stickers of all of the Japanese uh, section of the uh, women with AEW women's tournament that happened okay. over COVID. And I got them like a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was like six months later, and that was just yeah. them coming from. It was just trying to get them through customs, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I, I, uh, for Americans, um, that is not a problem for for my Kickstarters. I use a service up here called uh, I think it's called Chit Chats, mm -hmm. and basically, uh, they got an off. They've got a couple of offices here in Toronto. I go there uh, with all my packages. I buy. USPS stamps. I buy American postage. They load this shit into a truck, drive it across the border to Buffalo. <laughs> oh no! And <laughs> take it to a postal a post office. So uh, it saves a couple of bucks on what international postage would be. Yeah, and it and it saves a bunch of time. So basically, you're you add an extra day, but your stuff is coming from Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, That's so great. it's the, the benefits I, I always talk about, I, you know, somebody, I, I heard this in a, a documentary somewhere years ago and, uh, that 90% of the Canadian population lives within a hundred miles of the American border. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in this particular instance, 
that is very beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, if you look at the map, you see all the highways are down by the border. So, because I mean, yeah. it gets, you know, hostile if you go further north sometimes. So, um, no, that's great. So, everybody, please go support that. I know uh, our crew's got a great history of supporting uh, Kickstarters and, 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 and things like this. And I, mean, I know we got a couple of comic fans in there. They're all talking about the cons in the uh, chat room. Uh, uh, while we've been uh, uh, chatting here, so oh yeah, I, I actually this weekend I'm at uh, uh, Fan Expo Canada here in Toronto, mm -hmm. which is the first. Will it'll be my first convention since uh, Edmonton at the end of uh, in like October of 2019. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's two full years since I've done a convention. Wow! And then you know I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for next year because this is my first year. Uh, in addition to being in Artist Alley, I'm going to be hosting panels for the convention, which is a thing I've done at other conventions. But um, I'm going to be hosting panel uh, sketch battles for uh, for Fan Expo, and then we're talking about next year me doing at least the five Canadian conventions that the uh, that the company has: two here in Toronto, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. And then there's a, a handful of American just I wish they had bought. I wish that Informa had bought Pittsburgh. But uh, <laughs> you know, I next year there there's some places San Francisco, Denver, um, Chicago, Cleveland, Philly are all places that I'm I'm thinking, you know, can I can I make arrangements to do those too? Uh, we have uh, some some in, some inserts here from uh, Chris Larusso on the YouTube chat. By the way, Chris uh, Larusso, we got a quote from Samoa Joe: "Are Hamrick and Carino going to save you now?" Oh shit! <laughs> and then I think he I mean, he was probably correcting me. He also said psychosexual panic. Uh, so I don't know if that's what I said earlier, but uh, yeah, no, that's what you said. Okay, okay. so. Uh, yeah, Samoa Joe. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> one of the early One PW shows. Mm -hmm. Um, after the show, we were uh we're we're at the hotel. They always used to put us up in these great hotels. So some of the boys are sitting around in the there's a like a lounge, a pub, basically, uh, in uh, the lobby bar of this uh this country inn. And um, some of the guys are sitting there playing poker. They're taking their poker real seriously. Uh, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Chris Daniels, and one other person who I currently cannot remember. At the same time, there was a Scottish kid who will go unnamed because he's one of the worst human beings who ever lived. Legit. Um, he was leading a group of a uh, group of people around the hotel just like battering people with pillows right they just surround you and they pummel you with pillows and oh, a couple of people thought it was funny and a couple I've of people thought it was hey what the fuck are you doing well anyways at some point um he says to this this group of people hey why don't we go into the bar and we'll get the boys playing poker. <laughs> mm -mm. To which, to which Steve Carino says, "Yeah, sure, that's a great idea." No, oh. no, oh, no. On the count of three, one, two, three. Carino holds everybody back. This kid runs <laughs> into the bar. Boom, boom, boom. Start battering Samoa Joe, and then slowly dawns on him. No one else is here and he turns tail and runs because he's now literally running for his life i'm sitting at a at a elevated table uh next to this and you know it's just what the fuck and this is the here's my impression of samoa joe okay he's got his head down shoulders up because he's getting hit from behind poker in his hand uh, cards in his hand and he just comes up real slow and he's like what the fuck and aj styles is sitting across from him and he goes now joe no <laughs> what the fuck 
and he gets really fucking angry. And then somebody tells him what happened, and he's like, "Where? I'm gonna fucking murder him!" And he gets up and he storms out. And the guys are like, "Like this is serious." There's hundreds of dollars on the table, and Joe abandons it. The boys abandon it because they know they got to save a guy's life. We all storm out. I'm just sitting at the table. I drink at a Carlsberg, and I just oh fuck me because i'm the booker i gotta go i gotta go save a life i gotta go save a life of a kid i don't like mm-hmm. i already didn't this is like the second set of shows was, i think this was january of 2006 i already didn't like this kid i was i wasn't gonna book him again because i didn't book him in the first place um joe finds him and grabs him up like hand on throat goozles him they're outside this um circular entrance to the uh right in front of the hotel and it's got this water feature in front with all these plants. it's beautiful and it's this clear beautiful night and there's like 20 guys all gathered around outside like a playground fight waiting to see samoa joe pop this kid's head off like a pez pez dispenser <laughs> and uh it's uh, and that's where that line comes from. Who's gonna save you now? Is Carino and Hamrick gonna save you? And Carino and Hamrick are standing right there, going, "Oh no, oh, we don't want any part of this." <laughs> and eventually, we have to step in and stop this and save this kid's life. And everybody, they all, you know, hey, it's it's okay, Joe, it's okay. And the crowd starts to move back towards the bar, right? And I'm left out there with this this Scottish kid, and I look at him and I say, you're done here. Like, you're fucking fired, dude. Don't come back. And I don't want to, I don't want to see you at the shows six months from now. I don't want you thinking that everything is going to be smoothed over and you can try to get back. You're fucking done. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want this company to have anything to do with you. And I just, I just let them know that was it. It was it. It was it. It was done. And then three or four months later, I at like middle of the year, I left the company and uh, they, they gave Carino the book and Carino decided, Hey, the, this became such a firestorm on the internet over there. Carino decided, Hey man, there's money to be made and brought the Scottish <laughs> kid back in to feud with Samoa Joe. And to this day, once a year or so, I will text Carino and I'll say, why the fuck did you rehire that guy? And his response to me is always, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> wow. But yeah, Samoa Joe, I almost legitimately got to see Samoa Joe take a life and <laughs> It would have been des- it, it would have been making the world a better place. <laughs> so oh, yeah, <laughs> I believe I believe this was referenced. As, I mean, would you stop him? No, 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 no. This has been referenced, I think, as Pillowgate. Correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The great it, it's 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 usually called uh, the 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 uh, the pillow fight incident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there 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 are books. Literally, there are books. Where like a, a a section of a book is dedicated to this night. <laughs> this is a this is a pivotal. This is a turning point. This is a big tentpole event in the history of One PW, man. And uh, and yeah, and the only reason I saved this kid's life, I I stepped in to stop this, was because. It was my job to step in to stop this. I had already decided this kid wasn't coming back. People were complaining about him. Other, you know, other workers were complaining about him. He was a tremendous douche, like and and literally criminally one of the worst human beings I've ever come face to face with. Uh, when I went back for the first anniversary show. Carino had to take me aside because I was I was doing business in the ring with this kid and Carino had to take me aside and say please don't hurt him kingdom. <laughs> 
only because I love you, Steve. <laughs> wow. That kid may or may not still be in jail right now in, in England. <laughs> yeah. Fucking garbage human being. Wow. Garbage human being. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for that story. Uh, again, uh, my name is Kingdom. All over social medias. Go follow that. Follow the Kickstarter. That's launching next Tuesday. Uh, so, and that was, uh, that, 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 what was that dot com again? I love the dot com. That's freaking genius. Kickstart this comic dot com. Kickstart this comic dot com. It'll take you to the pre launch page right now. And once the, uh, once the, the project launches, once the campaign launch, launches, it'll take you directly to the campaign page. <laughs> and I plan to, I plan to keep rolling through Kickstarters, building up steam. Yeah. So that, you know, two, three, eventually four times a year, I'm running a Kickstarter and uh, uh, I'll be hanging on to that URL. Kickstartthiscomic.com will be the fast and easy way to find out whatever I'm working on at that point. Awesome. Go check it out.